If you take a candle and you light the candle up and you put it, the, a basket over the candle, it's a wooden basket back in the day. What's going to happen to the basket? It's going to burn. What's going to happen if you put it underneath the, your bed? What's going to burn? Guys, Jesus' light does not, cannot be hidden. If it hides, it burns you from inside. You know you have to share it. There's something that's called the conviction of the Holy Spirit where you have to start sharing something about God. Start sharing your light. There was a, um, I was at the gym just a few days ago and it was so random. I was wearing this shirt. It was saying, America shall be saved. I was wa- walking around, working out, doing my thing, just being a normal person, listening to a sermon on my AirPods. And all of a sudden, I get up from this uh, bench. I see this grandpa just a few seats down from me. I'm like, I really want to talk to him. I really want to talk to him. Just this desire. And I see that he starts to limp as he's like walking around. He's like limping a little bit, you know? I'm like, man, I need to pray for him. I've seen healings at the gym before. I want to pray for him again. So I was like, man, how did I do it? I always have these, these doubts that come in, and I'm always like trying to battle over. I'm like, how did I do it? I don't know what to do. And I'm just like, I don't, know, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to approach him properly. Oh, let me just work on another set. And I work on another set. I come around to fix the weight, and he's right there in front of my face. And he's like, I really like your shirt, man. America has to get saved. And I was like, really? I really wanted to speak to you just a few minutes ago. Let's break that ice right there. You know, I saw that you were limping. What happened to you? And he's like, well, it's a bunch of construction injuries and everything else. I said, well, you like my shirt. What church do you go to? He's like, I stepped away from church. It's a long story. I'm like, I wonder why I had to talk to you in the first place. And he, I said that inside. And he starts talking to me. I'm like, well, you know what? I want to tell you something. I was sitting there on the bench. And the whole entire time, my heart was trying to, to go and pray for you. But I was just holding myself back. And I was trying to figure out how to speak to you. But then you came up to talk to me. So I have to say what's on my heart. He's like, what? I was like, I want to pray for you, for you to be healed. He just looks at me. He's like, sure, why not? <laughs> Some random kids approaching him to be prayed for. Sure thing, why not? So I prayed for him. It was the most simple prayer that I could make up. I was just like, Father, in Jesus' name, Pain, leave, back be healed, knee be healed, in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's it. I walked away. But before I walked away, I stopped and I was like, hey, by the way, I want to tell you something. Church hurt is not from the Lord. The devil will instill church hurt to make sure that you are separated from God. Do not let people define who God is. Let God define who God is. And he just kind of looked at me and I, I walked away. That was my whole entire conversation with him. Two days later, I'm sitting with a pastor in uh, Venice. As I'm, as I'm sitting with this pastor, I'm talking to him. And he's like, hey, do, which gym do you go to? I'm like, uh, Planet Fitness. And he's like, do you pray for people at your gym? I'm like, yeah, I do. Uh, quite, quite a lot sometimes. And he's like, so something weird happened at our service a few days ago. He's like, or yesterday. Something weird happened at our service. Because this one random guy comes in with his wife. And he tells us that this random guy approached him at the gym. And he saw that he was limping, so he prayed for him. And uh, after this guy walked away, he said, do not let people define God like God define God. And then he just walked away. But the moment that he walked away, his back and his knee got fully healed. And so he comes home, he comes home, tells his wife, and says, I need to get right with God. I want to go back to church. So they go back to church. They get plugged into the church. And this pastor meets him, and I'm meeting up with the pastor the next day. God made a full entire loop of something that I was doubting in my heart. To go do. I was trying to hide that light and I was burning inside. And God's like, Vasily, I don't want you to burn up. I want you to actually shine the light. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity. I'm gonna make him come to you. I'm gonna make him do it. There's times in, in my life that have <laughs> that have completely derailed my idea of how God can work in my life. It's so weird because I put up so many walls against being used sometimes. I just put so many walls. I I'm sitting at a cashier at, uh, at Starbucks. I believe one day, and as I'm sitting in this, uh, with this, uh, I'm talking with this cashier. I wasn't sitting; I was standing. Sorry. As I was talking to this cashier, all of a sudden, in my heart, I'm like, something has to tell her that Jesus really loves her. I was like, I don't know why. I just have to tell her this, and it was very simple, nothing crazy. I said, you know what, ma'am? I just have to tell you, Jesus really loves you. She looks at me and she's like, Why would you tell me that right now? I'm like, I don't know. I just want to tell you that Jesus really loves you. And she's like, I really need to hear that. Very simple. I didn't want to interrupt. There was a whole line. She's like, I really need to hear it. I said, God's with you. Just come to him. In your, in your prayer closet, just come to him. Go back home and just come to him. He's going to be there. That was it. I walked away. I didn't do anything crazy. 
But a few days later, I was at McDonald's. I'm not sure if I, if I, if I shared this story. I'm gonna, I, have, I have a few things. You know, they say that an evangelist is a person who has a lot of testimonies. I, I want to share a few testimonies just to, just to get some things stirred up. I was at McDonald's, and once again, I'm walking there with my, uh, I'm with, there with my friend. I'm walking, and we ate, and I'm just sitting there in my heart. I feel something in my heart. It's burning. I'm just trying to keep it back. I'm with my friend. I don't want to be, make them uncomfortable. I just do not want to let this thing go, but it's like burning inside me. I'm like, listen, I need to talk to somebody. And they're like, who do you need to talk to? And I was like, I don't know, but somebody here needs to be talked to. And so we are walking out of the store. I'm walking out, and this burning inside me is getting to such a deep level. that I'm like, I cannot go to my car. If I go to my car, I feel like I'm going to disobey God, and I feel like I'm going to be walking against what he wants me to walk to. I, so I stopped. And the, the person just kept walking to their car, and I was just like, I'm going back. So I walk back in. I get inside, and I'm just looking around. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Just looking around. I just knew that God wanted to touch somebody's life. Has anybody had that kind of feeling? Just randomly where you just felt like God wanted to do something, but you didn't know what? And so I'm just looking. And because I didn't know who, I just went to the first person I saw. And this is, is this black guy that uh, just, I don't know, he was just doing mopping on the floor. And, I'm, and I walk up to him and I said, hey, can I tell you something? He's like, what? I said, God really loves you. He's like, what makes you say that? I said, I don't know. I, I just could not leave this place because I feel like God's after your heart. And then the Holy Spirit started speaking for me. And I said, you know what? In my life, I feel like I've been to the church for 23 years, but I never met God. I was walking around church. I was doing the church things, but I never met God in my life. But it was only when I came to him in my prayer closet that he met me personally. And in a second, my addictions fell off. In a second, my, my household was fixed. I became a better husband than I was. I just started sharing this testimony like on repeat for him. And he's looking at me and just tears started flowing down his eyes. I'm like, why are you crying? And he's like, because you do not know what I'm listening to right now. So for the first time in 10 plus years, I turned on worship music. Because I feel like my life is a wreck. I feel like my, I'm, my marriage is a wreck. My household is a wreck. My finances are a wreck. Everything's a wreck. And I'm listening to this worship music because I, need, I just need something. And so I told God when I was leaving the house that, God, if you are real, touch me today. Then he meets me, and he gets a fresh touch of the Lord, gets baptized in the Holy Spirit right there in McDonald's, and then gets plugged into church that same day. Isn't our God great? Now let me ask you something. Did I have a chance to walk away from every single one of those moments? Do you know how many times I've walked away from those moments? If I could number them, it would be probably in the thousands. But something started to happen in me as I started to spend more time in Scripture. I started sitting there, and I started reading this word every single day. And as I was reading this word, something started to happen inside of me. I started to get a desire to talk to people. But this desire wasn't for me because I wasn't always up to talking to people. I started to get more of a deeper desire, and I was just sitting there, and I'm just like, God, I just want to spend time with you. And yet, the whole entire time, God's like, Vasily, I want you to go to Walmart. I'm like, but God, I just want to sit here with you. And he's like, Apostle, I want you to go to Venice downtown. I'm like, God, I want you to sit here with you. I'm walking to the gym, and God's like, go speak to this person. Go speak to that person. And I just feel like, like, but I want to just spend time with you. See, when you come before the Lord, something that happens. The light that you put inside you as you're reading, all of a sudden has to start Shining. If the light that you're putting inside is not shining, then something's going to happen inside. The things that you're going to be putting in, they're not going to have anywhere to go. There is, has to be an overflowing of a Christian's life. Let me make it as a vessel. How much do you think God will keep filling up a vessel? How much do you think you will, be keep, you will keep filling up a vessel if it is already full to the brim and there's nowhere else to go? Will you keep, keep pouring water in there? It's naturally. You will stop. If you're pouring tea into a cup, would you keep pouring tea? Why would you pour tea again? Because it's empty. Now, if you leave that tea, if you pour tea into a cup and you leave that tea on the table for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve days, will you come back to that tea and will you go and take a sip? Or if I paid you some money? I'm just kidding. <laughs> would you be taking a sip? There's something that, that's very special when we spend time with the Lord, he says that 
I am. Wow, I just lost that word. <laughs> I am the living water. Whoever comes to me shall never thirst again. Whoever drinks of me shall never thirst again. We drink of the Lord, and we have to continue drinking. But if that drink that we're coming into us is not being poured out onto something, then the drink starts to tap off, and we get comfortable, and then we start to step away because now we're comfortable. We feel, we feel like we're, we're, we can get complacent because our drink is full, but inside that drink starts to grow bacteria. Friends, I want to tell you something. If you start filling yourself up with light and the light is not going anywhere else, what's going to happen to that light? It's going to stay inside you? It's going to start to decrease and decrease. And you're still going to think after a while that you're still full of light, but the light has actually became darkness because you're so warm instead of hot before the Lord that you still feel like there's something inside you. But in reality, you are far, far away. The very danger of being lukewarm, and I believe, Vitaly, you, you spoke about this in the conference. The danger about being lukewarm is that you know everything in the sermon. You know the words that I can say. You have heard them a hundred times. And they have no effect in you because you think that you know it all. And you feel like you're good. You feel like you're all right. But guess what? When Jesus called Lazarus up from the grave, Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. There's somebody that came out of the grave. Do you remember who it was? It was Lazarus. He came out and he was bounded. And what did Jesus say? Go and untie him. Sometimes we can be raised from the dead, from uh, spiritual death into spiritual life. But as we're raised from the dead, we end up continuing to be bound in the lukewarmness. Where we're okay to be here, we are alive, but we're not going to be doing anything with ourselves. We're okay to be alive. And so we're stuck at the entryway of the grave, and we're not going to go forward into the light. We get burned up by God. We're not going to go backwards because there is cold. We like to be warm. And it's so difficult to get hot into a place because you're comfortable. Oh. There's been moments in my life where I just feel that I could do so much for God. And I step out to do it, and nothing happens because I don't fill myself up. But then there's moments where I'm filled up, and I feel like I could be doing a hundred other things, but I'm out there on the streets doing something for God. There's two different things that I realized something. Sometimes God will lead you a different way in a different direction than where you're planning to go because he knows what's best for your life. He knows what's best for your life. And it's very important to know when God is leading you and how he leads you. It's very important to know when and how God is leading you. And the only way that you're going to see how God's leading you is if you know who God is in your life. In Exodus... The Israelites just become free, and they just become free. They just leave Israel, uh, Egypt. And as they leave Egypt, God says specifically this. Uh, God does this. It says uh, in Exodus chapter 13, verse 17, it says, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led people, led the people around by the way of the sea, of the wilderness, uh, by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks. We can be filled up with light, but there's something that needs to happen. We need to be following God. See, we, we can have a light inside us. We need to follow God. If the light within you is just shining for no reason and it doesn't have a place to go, then you're just shining and you're going to get dimmed out. But if you're following God and God's going to know where to lead you because he knows where the devil's at and he knows where, where, uh, where the place where you will grow best is at. There's an intimacy that's called being with him, being with him every single day.
I'm sorry, guys. Just uh, my, my thoughts just went off two different ways. The light that is within you has to shine. I completely said that wrong way I just said. The light that, that's within you has to shine. But if the light is shining in the wrong direction, if you're not allowing God to teach you how to shine the light properly, then the light is not going to be shining in the proper place, and that proper place is not going to give anything. And you might come up to a person that's not ready to receive light, and you're just shining, 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 and they're not ready for anything. But you might come to a person that's ready to receive light. And you have to follow God in every single moment as you're doing that. Because if you're not following God, then you're leading to a place of doubt. You're leading to a place of, oh, I'm, I was this even working. Why should I let my light shine? And you're hiding this light. And you come to a place where God wants to use you, but you're not listening to his voice. See, the children here, they could follow through the land of uh, Philistines. And if they went through the land, it would be so quick. It would be so simple. And let me just paraphrase this to our life. We can have a thing. Maybe it's financial growth. Maybe it's something in your life that you need a quick fix on. And you can make a shortcut in your life. But something happens. God takes you an opposite way. He takes you through a longer route because he needs you to grow. He wants you to be a successful light. He doesn't want you to be a light that burns out quickly. He wants you to be a light that burns for a long time. He's placed a light inside you that is not supposed to just catch a flame and burn. He wants you, the fire that's inside you to burn for a long time. And why does he want this light to be in you? Why would he ever place light into your life? It says you are the city that's set on the hill. Why are you the city that's set on the hill? In the, back in the day, if it was dark and you're walking through the wilderness and you see a city pop up light, like Dennis's iPhone uh, came out first. I'm going to name him. A city has the light shining. It means that it's a beacon of hope for the people around it. If I am in darkness and I'm looking for a place to go and I'm cold, I'm freezing, I will start going through that city. Now, in the same reference, if I have light inside me, which light can be defined as the word of God inside you, and says that the word, your word is the light into my feet, I am now not, not just going nowhere. I am now following because I can see where I'm going and I'm shining the light in front of me and I know where I'm going. The Israelites in Exodus... Uh, it says this in verse 21, And the Lord went before them day and night in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. He went before them, and they could see where they could go. He didn't go behind them. We're not going in front of the Lord. We're not a Christian to go in front of what God does. God's given us something to lead us every single day. But if we start to lead ourselves, if we start to jump in front of ourselves, like for instance, I knew I needed to speak to somebody in, in uh, McDonald's, and I knew I needed to speak to this person, but... If I just decide to say, okay, I'm going to go talk to the cashier. Hey, do you know about Jesus? And they're like, yeah, no, whatever. And that might just burn out really quickly. And I went and said, hey, do you know about Jesus? And that might burn out really quickly. I'll, or if I just did not speak to anybody at all, I would walk outside and I would leave home. I am now not allowing God to lead me. But I did something. I waited and I stopped. I stopped. And as I stopped... I just was asking God, who do you want me to speak to? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to say it? What do you want me to say? Let, like, lead me, God. And so I went inside the, the McDonald's, and I came inside. I just looked. Again, asked, who do you want me to talk to? Whenever I, then I was not getting anything, I knew I had to do something. So I looked over, and I said, hey, the first person that was next to me. And that person was exactly the person that God wanted me to speak to. It's that simple obedience with God. See, he didn't say that he gave you light so this light could only shine on you. He said he gave you light so that light can shine to others. If you're shining light on yourself, you might be the spotlight. But if you shine light to others, you might actually guide them to something. You might be able to be the, be, be the, the beacon of hope for them. If you're just keeping all the light for yourself, and I don't know why, but God's really uh, just on my heart right now pulling me say this. There's so much different types of lights that are in the world right now. And every single light wants to claim, every single part of the darkness that wants to be light wants to claim that it's the light. For instance, the sexual identity issues that we have in our schools. It's so crazy because now even at the hospital, I have to now mark off if somebody is a man, female, or non-binary, or whatever they want to list off. 
It's so crazy because something that's, that's true, that was formed by God, is now trying to classify itself as a light. Sorry, something that was formed by God is now the devil is trying to take that, that light, create it to be a darkness, and now class, try to classify it to be a light. But that's still darkness, and people might find hope in that darkness, darkness, but they're still searching for a light. And whenever you become that beacon of hope for them, they might be able to start questioning, why are you shining brighter than me? Why is your light pulling my attention? Like we will pull our attention into the, into the phone of the people that are shining. When you stand as the beacon of hope into people's lives, you might have to answer some hard questions. And I was at work where I, I remember I shared one time that I got in trouble for speaking about Jesus at work multiple times. And I was sitting in front of HR and they brought up this one question. They said, we think that uh, you are against um, gay people. And I'm like, oh, okay, what do I say now? This question got brought up to me. It was, really, really, it was really subtle how she brought it up. It wasn't just straight up like that. But she said, um, she said that, and I stand there, and I'm like, okay, God, I have a moment right now. I know I've said that I'm not going to change my ways to them, and they know that my answers are going to be on the same. God, I'm probably going to get fired for saying this. I was like, I, was like, I, do, not hate black, uh, I do not hate gay people. I'm not against gay people. What I am against is the sin that's inside their life. I said, the Bible clearly teaches this, and I have to stand on the side of the Bible. And the, she, the lady's looking at me, and she's like, she's like so, you're not, so you do not hate gay people? I said, no. I work with them all day. But if you ask them what my standing is, they know where I stand. That I think is incorrect. But because I have to love that person, I cannot love the sin that they're committing. I have to love that person. I will be still their friend. I will not treat them differently. I will still be their friend. There, God, gave me, God gave me a special way to respond so I wouldn't get fired, but... I still had to respond. When you're shining, people will come to you with questions. And some of them are going to be offensive questions. Do not be afraid to stand up for the light that you're shining. Stop tainting your light to be more dimmer for the world. Allow the light to shine bright and allow the light to cast away all darkness. Did you see whenever we had all the lights off? <clears throat> Did you see whenever we had all the lights off? It was dark in here. But the moment the lights came on, the darkness lifted. Whenever light comes into darkness, it exposes the darkness. It doesn't matter how long the darkness has been here. If we were gone from this room for three weeks, and we came back into this room after three weeks, we pressed one button, it's now light again. That's the power that you carry. You might go into your schools, you might go into your workplaces, and though that workplace has not heard about God for hundreds of years, you are now there. And now you be the light. It doesn't mean you start talking to every single person about Jesus, but now you start living a pure life before them. And as you live a pure life before them, they're going to ask questions. Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? What's so different about you? Why have you been, why do you not cuss? Why do you not, why do you not get mad at the boss whenever the boss tells you something to do? You start being pure before them and it causes them to question. And then it opens up a way for you to start sharing your testimony. It opens up a way for you to start sharing the gospel. I remember one time I was at, at work really, uh, very simple setting. I haven't even started speaking about God to anybody. But this girl came up to me and she's like, can I please speak to you for a minute? And I said, yeah, sure. She sits down and she's like, I don't know why, but every time I see you, I'm very convicted. And I was like, uh, she said convicted, so she must be some kind of Christian. <laughs> most, of the people, most of the time, people do not say convicted if they're not Christians. I was like, what are you convicted of? She's like, I used to go to church. I used to be uh, in the ministry and everything else. But one of the leaders of the church, he... Um, me and him started to date, and now, then we started to sleep around. And then we both started to slack off going to church. And now we're not going to church at all. We're not in part of any community, and we're just living together, sleeping, sleeping with each other, but we're not married. And every time I see you, these thoughts come into my head that I'm in the wrong, and I need to become right again. And I'm like, well, I haven't said anything about Jesus. This girl knows about Jesus. Everything else is kind of laid out before me. And I was like, what else do you have to do except for repent? She's like, what do you mean? I said, you have to ask for forgiveness from God. And... You cannot go home and keep sleeping with your boyfriend. If you want to stay together, you have to get married. Now, that could get me in trouble right there on itself, telling somebody that the thing that they're doing is wrong. But I was just very simple. I said, you, if you want to be different and you feel like you're convicted, come before the Lord as you are right now and just say to him, God, I, I'm sorry for sleeping around my boyfriend. God, I'm going to come home. I'm going to talk to him, and we have to figure our life out right here in this moment. And God's going to forgive you 
right here in this moment. And you're going to be a fully free vessel. And then you're going to be able to come home. And then you're going to be able to talk to your boyfriend. So I thought our prayer was very simple. It was literally because we couldn't make anything loud. It was just, God, I'm sorry. I want to be different. I want to be full yours. That was it. And the nursing station. She goes home, comes back next week, and she says, Vasily, we're getting married this weekend. All right, let's go. She didn't ask me to, she didn't ask me to do anything for the wedding. I, was, I would have had to say no, I had to divert it to Vitaly. But she's like, Vasily, we're getting married this weekend. I was like, oh, right, come on. Her boyfriend, she comes home to her boyfriend. Her boyfriend comes and talks to her first. She didn't talk to him. She says, listen. He said, listen, today I was just feeling really convicted for what we're doing. We need to go back to church. We need to apologize to the pastor. We need to apologize to God. We need to get right with God. They come to church. The pastor, guess what? The pastor tells them, you guys need to get married. So they got married the next weekend. Praise God. They're not living in darkness. When you come into a place, you have the ability to cast a light. Now, I could have started to say this. That you guys are not light and you need the light of the world. Sorry, you need the light of Jesus inside you so that you can shine light into the world. But you've been in church for so long. You've been reading the Bible. How many of you read the Bible at, at night or in the, during the day? Really? You guys don't read the Bible? I'm just joking. Well, if you do not read the Bible, you need to get into the Bible because something happens. When you are reading the Bible, you're spending time with the Lord. If you're not reading the Bible, I can be as light as I want to be, but you'll see that if I do not read the Bible after two or three days, four or five days, six days, I'm a very dim little candle. And there's no blazing light inside of me. You will see the things I say to people and you'll be like, where have you been? Have you been in your secret place? Probably not. Whenever I'm not reading the Bible, whenever I'm not spending time with God, something happens. That pillar of cloud that's supposed to be in front of me has somehow slipped to be behind me. Has somehow slipped to be behind me. There's something that says in, in Psalms 91, verse 1, it says, Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, if you spend time with God, Something happens, you will start to be behind him. You will dwell in his shadow. You're going to start to follow him. You're not going to be in the shadow if God has to be following you. And you will very quickly see that you're not in the shadow because all the attacks of the enemy are just coming right at you and they're hurting. Whenever you're dwelling in the secret place of him, you start to be in his shadow. You start to follow that pillar. You start to follow that pillar of cloud or fire, however you want to say it, and you're starting to follow God. And his ways start to lead you left and right so that you can be the most effective in showing you your light into this world. But if you start to just go out and not spend time with God, that pillar of cloud, God's presence starts going behind you. And you'll very quickly see how you do not know what he's saying. You do not know what he's doing. You start to doubt your identity. You start to doubt your purpose. You start to doubt the plans that God has for your life. And the devil loves to use doubt. The same way he used doubt for Eve, he tried to use the same thing on Jesus. Same reason, the same way that he tried to use it on Jesus, he uses it on you and me every single day. God says, you are the light of the world. And, God's, and the devil's like, you must be a very dim light because I haven't seen you be shining. And you're like, uh. God says, you are the salt of the world. And the devil's like, well, you taste like sugar today. God says, you are mine. And the devil says, God doesn't want you. When we stay believing the devil's words, and we're not abiding in the shadow of God, it's very hard to shine a light. Because you think that you're shining a light, but in reality, you're shining yourself. You're shining who you are, and you are a very flawed person. I am a very flawed person. I have a lot of flaws that are inside of me. But it's only whenever I spend time with God am I able to shine God and God himself. Whenever I'm spending time with God, people's lives, like, I, like the testimonies that I shared, those testimonies happen to me every single day of my life. It's not because I'm some, some kind of really cool person. No, it's because I spend time with God. I come to him. I spend time with him, whether it's in the very early morning when my baby now wakes me up because I have a baby newborn, <laughs> or it's very, whether it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, I have to come to him. My heart is dependent on him. It's very much dependent on him. The thing is that the Israelites, they were following a pillar of cloud because they were dependent on that. And God led them through the desert to the Red Sea. And at the Red Sea, he wanted them to do something. They were thinking that they were going to be destroyed by the devil. They were thinking that the devil was going to have his way with their life. 
But God had a different plan. When you are following the pillar of cloud, there's going to come a time when God's going to lead you to a place where you're able to destroy the devil's voice. You're able to destroy the devil's lies. You're able to destroy the things that the devil has to bring to you. And just the same way as Pharaoh at the Red Sea, for those of you that don't, do not read the Bible, I'm going to say this. At the Red Sea, the sea split, and they, the Israelites came through, and so did Pharaoh. This is the same way as Pharaoh got drowned by the water. When you're following God, and you're following that pillar, and you're abiding in his, in his shadow, all of a sudden the devil's attacks start getting drowned by God's water as well. There's something that, that, that happens. God takes over your life, and the devil's attacks can do nothing to you. Moses says, be still to the people as the Pharaoh's coming in. He says, be still, for today you will see the salvation of, your, of the Lord. The devil can be doing whatever he wants to do in you. I want to tell you something. There's a light that's inside you. The devil only attacks you because he knows that you have potential to get somebody else out of hell. Or he's attacking you because he doesn't want you to go towards the light. Because he doesn't want you to be the person that's going to be done getting people out of hell. The devil doesn't want people to get saved. Misery loves company. He wants as many people to be cramped in hell as possible because he's going to be suffering. He wants everybody else to be suffering. But God says, you are the light. Why are you the light? In Corinthians, he says that he has made you a minister of reconciliation. He has given you the word of reconciliation inside you. That light that he's given you is a word of reconciliation. It's a word that's able to pull somebody out of darkness into a new light. He can pull somebody out of the grave itself into life. That's the word of, uh, of reconciliation. It's to reconcile somebody back to Jesus. You have that within you. Now, if I asked you guys to share that to somebody right now, some of you might go out and do it, and some of you might not. There's a reason why we need to follow that cloud. God wants to teach you how to shine. He really wants you to be the light of the world. He really wants you to be the salt of this world. He really wants you to be the city that's set on the hill. He wants you to shine. He wants you to cast out all darkness from your workplaces. He wants you to cast out all darkness from your families. He wants you to cast out the sin in somebody's life. He wants you to attack the devil where he's at. Because the reason why you're the light, before you were the light, Christ had to be the light of the world. And what did Christ come to do? He came to destroy the works of the devil. And then he made you light so that you could do one thing. You could come and destroy the works of the devil. The devil is not something great. He's under your feet. Come on, somebody say it with me. The devil is under your feet. He's under your feet. He has nothing against you. But the thing is that he wants to trick you so that you would think that he does. He wants, you to trick, he wants to trick you to think that, that he has some influence over your life. That he has something to say in your life. But God says that you are the light of the world. Who do you want to believe? Do you want to believe the devil and his lies? Or do you want to start to believe God's word? Listen, God did not give you this light to just shine it at yourself. God gave you this light to shine into everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. I didn't know how to, how to speak about God at work. I didn't know how to speak about God in, in the streets. I didn't know about any single thing. I've never been through Bible school. I've never been through any ministry classes. I don't have any other experience except for reading my Bible. This is the only experience I have. But something in this Bible was enough for me to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of salvations. Something here was enough for me to see, start seeing the sick being healed at the hospital and outside the hospital. Something was, in here was enough to break away all my addictions that I had. Something in here was enough. Jesus' light that's inside you is enough to make you bold, to make you courageous, to make you strong. But you have to feed it. And you only can feed, him, feed it with one thing, his word. His word is alive. His word is true. And his word longs to be inside of you. Oh, that actually rhymed. His, long, his word longs to be inside of you. Start feeding your spirit man with the word.
You are the light that is seated, that is set on the hill. That's the city. You're the city. You in itself are the lampstand that cannot be hidden. You in itself is the salt that preserves the good stuff, the good meat. A salt that doesn't preserve anything is useless. You are useful. And you in itself are God's. If the devil tells you anything other than that, which he, which he tries to do all the time, it is a lie. He's the father of lies. But I want you to know that today you can have courage to stand up against the devil and say, I am the light of the world. Jesus has placed the light in me and now I can shine only by the grace of Jesus. If there's sin inside you, it's very difficult to shine. If there's any, I, I've stood before a demon as, he was, as I was trying to cast him out and he looked at me and he's just like, I know what you did. And I'm like, what did I do? I, looked, I, I went through my life. I assessed my life real quickly. I realized that no, I repented of all my sin. I said, no, you do not. The only thing you know is that I'm, a, I'm alive in Christ. And right now in the mighty name of Jesus, get out. And the guy fell to the floor and, and he was delivered. The devil knows what you do. And he uses those things to influence the light that you have. And he starts tampering with the power of the light that's inside you through sin. That's why John says, little children, do not let anybody deceive you. If anyone sins, he is of the devil. And for he has not known God nor seen him. There's a criteria, and God doesn't want your light to be tampered with. God wants you to shine. He wants you to shine. So if there's sin in your life, repent. Just say, God, forgive me for my sins. If there's something that you've been hiding from it because you're shy, say, God, I need your boldness. It doesn't mean for you to go out to the streets right now and start to evangelize to 10, 15, 15 20 people. It means for you to start being that person that's a pure light inside your work, inside your school, inside your household, inside everywhere else. You are the children of God. You are the children of God. Every single one of you was chosen and predestined to be here by God. God has been pulling on your heart with gentle cords of love. You are his children from the beginning. And there's other children of God that are still stuck in darkness. And your light draws them. Draws them back to God faster. He's given you the ability without saying a single word to pull people into Christ. I can go on and on and on and on. But I want to leave off with this one story. This is before I was even a really good Christian. I was, I was just a regular person that just went to church and went home, didn't pray, didn't do anything. But somebody invited me out to Orlando, and they were doing these Friday night evangelisms in the disco, uh, like, party national hub of the whatever you want to call it. It's literally four blocks, completely blocked off, and there's just no cars, no nothing. There's just cops pulling people out that are drugged out, and there's people that are partying and raving out. That's all that's happening in these four blocks. It's right in the heart of downtown Orlando. And I'm a, I'm a good old 19-year-old guy, and I walk in there, and I'm just walking around thinking, thinking that I'm going to do something, pray for some people. You know, God, God's got me. I'm a Christian. You know, I signed off. And I didn't realize how powerful just being a Christian is. Up until I was walking past this one person, and as I was walking past this person, they were sleeping on the floor. It was a homeless person. And they pop right up. Like, they stand up, and they look at me in the eyes, and they say, you cannot be here. And I was like, and luckily my friend was right next to me, my friend Daniel. And he looks and he like oversteps me because I was not prepared for the demonic attack right there. I was not prepared whatsoever. I, I instantly started to tremble. My, my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife now, was sitting here and I was just like, I got to be a man. But at the same time, this thing just freaked me out. I was not prepared to see what, what the influence of the light that's inside me has. And Daniel takes over and he says, he says, who do, who do you think you are? that you're going to tell me where I can and cannot be. And then we start doing the deliverance process on this lady. She gets fully delivered. She gets fully cleansed. She comes to know Jesus that same night. And then we go on one by one by one. And I'm just looking at this from a distance. And I'm like, God. And this is before I even, I even was fully like in, in with God. I was just, I was just a, good, a good boy growing up in church. And I'm like, God, you did this. And I didn't do anything. She looked at me and she said, you cannot be here because she doesn't want Jesus in that area. 
guess what? God's going to come in wherever the darkness is at. Wherever sin abounds, grace abounds evermore. You think that you think the people that are transgender, the people who are hom- uh, are in the homo, homo- whatever it is, homosexuality? I don't know. People, people, people are in there, they're in homosexuality. Uh, you think that that you cannot shine your light into them? They're just as lost as the person that's stuck in alcohol, the person that's stuck in drugs, and they're seeking out for one thing. They're seeking out for identity. They're seeking out for truth. And guess what? You carry inside you. You carry truth. You carry light. You carry the presence of God. And you're able to bring that into their life. But you have to be truthful to yourself and you have to be pure in your heart so that you know when and how and where to shine that light by following the pillar of God, but by following God himself and abiding in his secret place. So I want you guys to stand up. I know this was... um, I know this sermon was about how much you guys are light. I want you to remember what I said. Sin tampers with light. God wants your light to shine. God doesn't want that light to be hidden. He wants you to be bold. He wants you to be courageous. And the devil will use sin to influence your life to make sure that you are not shining. If you're dealing with sin in your life, I'm not going to ask you guys to come to the front. I'm actually going to ask you to, to, to pray in your places. If you're dealing with sin in your life, I want you to repent of it. Whenever the, the crowd asked Peter, they said, what must we do? Peter says, repent and be baptized. I want you to repent of your sin. If you have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit, there's a moment for you to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. But first thing that starts off is with Repentance. God will forgive every single sin that is repented of. We say, to God, we say to people, come to God as you are. But if we come to God in our sin, we will die. We cannot come to him as we are in our sin. We come to him and we repent of our sins. We have to repent of our sins. So I want, I want you to actually look into your heart. What are you dealing with? What are you going through? What sin is happening inside your heart? And you know it. I do not have to point it out. I want you to say, God, I repent of this. I repent of this sin. I repent of this sin. Maybe you haven't been spending time with God. Say, God, I repent from not spending time with you. I want to spend time with you again. Whenever you repent from God, your heart becomes pure. And it says in the Bible, a promise from Jesus says, those that are pure in heart will see God. You don't want your light to be dampened or tampered with. You want your light to shine, to cast out all darkness from within you and the outside community. So I just want you to be honest with yourself and pray that as we pray. Father, I thank you.